It takes all the running you can do in order to stay in the same place. So states the Red Queen hypothesis. Hello, my name is Zeosphere and today we'll be taking a dive into Mr. Love Queen's Choice, also known as Koi to Producer Evil X Love, an anime based on the Chinese visual novel and phone game. But before we get into the review, remember to like the video and subscribe for more anime reviews. And so let's see if this anime can evolve into something worth watching. Story with the story being based off a shoujo visual novel, I went to this show thinking that this would be just another romance show about girls swooning over a couple of hot guys. But Mr. Love Queen's choice took a more interesting turn than I thought. It starts with a quote from the Red Queen's hypothesis, stating that it takes all the running you can do in order to stay in the same place, meaning that those that stay the same or cannot go further beyond will eventually be left behind by evolution as we race across the track of life. Ecological explanation aside, this sets the premise for the development of quirks, I mean evils, or the people who develop superpowers, called evolvers. Enter in our main reverse harem protagonist, um, uh, potato. Yeah, because the main protagonist was based off a game, she never really had a name, so... For the sake of the video, we're gonna call her Potato. First name Potato, last name Chip, middle name Slim Shady. Anyway, Potato is the producer for a show called Miracle Finder about the strange and miraculous who she inherited from her late father. One day while investigating a series of odd teleportation incidents, she encounters a group called Black Swan, an organization looking to awaken the queen and forcibly bring about the next stage of human evolution. Finding out that they were involved in the death of her father as well as seeing how they treat those that get in their way, Potato decides to try and bring to light and take down this organization. Along the way, she comes into contact with many smexy evolvers that all help her with her work and investigations. Now, the main intrigue of the show is the fleshing out of our characters as well as the multiple layers of mystery behind Black Swan, the past of our characters, and the reasons behind why our dear old potato can't remember anything before the age of five. No, it's not because she's a spud, but because many of the characters in the story are all connected to our protagonists from some incident that took place 17 years ago. With each episode, we get to see a little bit more about what Black Swan is, why the harem is drawn to the MC, and how the world treats evolvers. It's an interesting premise, mixing the occasional action sequence and you have something that's a little less romance and a little more super powered mystery. But that doesn't mean there isn't any problems with the story and how it unfolds, so if you don't want to be spoiled, skip to the next section here. I'll be going over a lot of the mysteries and happenings of the later episodes, so I'd strongly suggest if you're planning to watch, to skip ahead. With that being out of the way, the biggest problem with the story of Queen's Choice is the last couple episodes where they pretty much rushed the development and skipped a lot of important details involving our main characters. For example, Kiro was seemingly done in by Black Swan while trying to take out a sleep inducing transmitter with Potato, but in about an episode or two later we see him with a white hairdo and with the title of Helios from Black Swan. We're meant to assume he's Kiro from the story, but he says he isn't a potato, but is still protective of her. So what happened to him? Why is he the way he is? How did he survive the horde of agents after him? If he surrendered to Black Swan, what did they do to him? Another slump is how Gavin suddenly started working with his father and the military in order to fight against Black Swan. We know from flashbacks that his father was a huge negative influence in his life and that he wouldn't willingly work with him even in a desperate situation. So how does Gavin go from being betrayed by the police chief who wants to eliminate all evolvers, including Black Swan, to working with the military and his father to go after Black Swan his way. Not to mention the reasons why Simon wanted to work with Black Swan, etc. While the world and its characters are interesting, there are just this heavy sense of withheld information that really makes things confusing towards the climax. I know they left things open for a season 2, but if you're leaving the ending more confused and excited, that's gonna hold you back. Characters 
Tell me, what do you like in a husbano? Because Mr. Love Queen's Choice has a good variety in boy toys to suit every non-existent female weeb's taste. We have Simon Lucian, the professor slash neuroscientist next door, who tries his best to help dear little potato with her show, but holds a dark secret. What about a Haku Gavin, police captain that specializes in handling evil cases, as well as the high school senpai who perhaps still has a crush on you? Perhaps the more serious Zen Victor is to your liking, the CEO of Loveland Financial Group, a bit cold as a businessman at first, but an excellent cook and son who'll go to great lengths to protect his dear potato. And lastly, there is the idol and elite hacker Kira Kiro, kind, bubbly, upbeat and addicted to sweets. Between these men, I'm sure you'll have someone to spoon you at night. <laughs> I suppose we also gotta go over Potato, MC, Protag Chan, Watashi, whatever you want to call her. Though she is the fill-in protagonist, that doesn't mean she doesn't have any personality as she is a rash, self-sacrificing, ever-moving character that constantly works towards her goals and cares deeply for everyone's well-being. But more importantly, her forgotten past and the way it connects to everyone else makes her a more interesting fill-in than most chosen one-main protagonists. There are also a bunch of other side characters, but they never really have much screen time to leave any real impression on me. As for my favorite characters, I'd say that Kiro has my heart as a good boy who melts my heart with his charm and courageousness, but there's also something to say about Victor who doesn't necessarily have a good romantic shot, but absolutely takes the scene with how blunt his opinions are, but also how his pragmatic view towards the world leads him to doing everything he can to get his way. Simon might be the most interesting character with how his secret affects his life in Potato, but a a lot of his character is both shrouded mystery and spoilers, so I could only hope that if there ever is a season 2 that they would flesh out his motives a little bit more. Which leaves Gavin as my least favorite character, mostly because I think he's simultaneously the most shallow and the most screwed over because of the pacing problems of the show. A lot of his backstory is glossed over and makes him feel not much more than justice advocate and love interest. But overall, I enjoyed all the characters from the show, though half of them aren't aren't done enough justice during the last third of the show due to rushed pacing. Music the opening is Nibiru no Yoke by Yutaro Miura. It's a J-pop song featuring piano, electric instruments, and strings. It has a pretty strong vocal performance as well with a gradual expanding of the track until it encompasses you in a series of strings and vocals. But at the same time, this isn't really anything that I would listen to on a regular basis as it sounds pretty standard given the origin. The ending is Major Ikite Akita Yuki by Konomi Suzuki, the same musician that did Decadences and ReZero Season 2's OP, which is surprising to me because this feels like an entirely different genre from what I was introduced to from her. It's a lot lighter feeling from her other work with the same motif of piano and strings for the show, along with soft rock instrumentation to set the stage for a stellar vocal performance. While not be my favorite song of hers from the season, it's still a jam. The background music, however, isn't the worst I've heard, but it isn't the best either. It does the job fair enough, but the tracks that play are usually this super elevator vibe music with how piano and electronic focus it is. And when things get a bit more emotional, the strings take over along with piano to set things in a sort of melancholy mood. That isn't really anything you're going to search for, but you're not going to mind it either. Animation the animation studio behind Queen's Choice is Studio Mappa, which is what initially gave me the interest to watch this show to begin with, especially from the excellent animation from shows like God of High School from the same season. Unfortunately, perhaps because they were putting in so much effort into a show that was airing the same season, the animation quality of Queen's Choice isn't all too impressive. With the show somewhere in between a mystery show and a shoujo romance, it would be hard to imagine the kind of animation that would both accentuate the details between the characters and their actions, along with the superpower fights that occur throughout the series. But in the end, the result we get is something that is never really detailed with its actions, nor something that screams quality action. It's functional animation most of the time, sometimes if there is a particularly intense scene, maybe there's a small 
spike at the quality of the special effects for the powers, but everything in the show feels pretty subdued from the actions to the color palette. At the same time, it isn't bad, it's just underwhelming. Fun Factor Watching this show the first time after Gibeah, I thought that this was a very enjoyable show with how it subverted expectations and got me invested with the characters. Rewatching it with the intent to review, that feeling didn't go away. The mysteries are engaging enough between the good story and the great characters, and there's always something going on to keep your attention. Whether it was some fights with Black Swan agents, or how Potato tries to keep her company going with investigating paranormal or oddly miraculous stories, or even how the Husbanos balance their lives with the goals and their interactions with Potato. With how the story likes to take its time with fleshing out some of its characters in the beginning before going hard into the action later, I thought that maybe this show would have been a bit more enjoyable if we saw a bit more romantic elements thrown in between Potato and the harem besides the odd holding each other just a bit too long stick. The only thing that holds it back is its poorly executed finale and rushed pacing for the later half of the show. While I can enjoy the characters as they are, my enjoyment can be heavily shaken if you're suddenly changing them without proper explanation. So here I stand, enjoying a show that will probably be buried by people either overlooking it or not enjoying its ending. A surprisingly good experience overall, but not something that might closely follow into the future or make me seek out the visual novel. Conclusions with Summer 2020 having a very small amount of shows being offered compared to other seasons, I dove into this show that I might have otherwise overlooked hungry for content. But what I got from it was different from what I expected and was more enjoyable than I thought. Averaging all of our scores, we come to a final score of 6.5 out of 10. A fine show that you might consider looking into if you're into shoujo or superpower mysteries. For alternate recommendations for something a bit more heavily focused into the reverse harem shoujo element, then My Next Life as a Villainess might suit your tastes. For something more superpowered and mystery driven, then maybe Darwin's Game might be up your alley. Though to be frank, I haven't seen many shoujo anime, so take these suggestions however you like, or watch my reviews of them if you think you'd be interested. Until next time, I'm Zeosphere, and I make regular anime content. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, comment below what you thought of Mr. Love Queen's choice, and don't forget, stay cultured.